Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another light novel review. Today, I am talking about volume number one in Fujino Omori's light novel series, Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon, Side on the Side, Sword Oratoria, volume number one. What a big honkin' title, but it makes it pretty clear that this is a spin-off series of the Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon, which I will just refer to as Danmachi because it saves me saying a whole lot. This series focuses on Belle's love interest, Eyes Wallenstein, something that I was really looking forward to because in the main series, Eyes has been a little bit of an unknown. She always seems to be a little bit distant and a little bit aloof, although she seems to have this interest in Belle. And this volume begins to explain who she is as a person. And it goes a long way to build parallels between her journey as an adventurer and Belle's journey. And I would say that it makes it a lot easier to see how it is that these two characters, even though there is a vast power difference between them, that there is a common ground that they can find with each other. So in that sense, it goes a long way to fleshing out a character that is obviously vital to the main series, but we really haven't spent a whole lot of time with. In this first volume, we are not dealing with an exclusive story that is completely separate from the main Danmachi series. In fact, this first volume almost mirrors exactly the progression of events that happened in the first volume of Danmachi, the main series. So it fills in gaps that we had after reading that first volume. And slight spoilers ahead for volume one of Danmachi, but I mean, really, I'm pretty sure you're reading this because you've read that series, so you it shouldn't be too bad. And I mean, it happens right at the beginning. So um, in the first, in the beginning of that series, of course, we have Belle coming face to face with a Minotaur on an upper level where the Minotaur should not be, and he is saved by eyes. And we really didn't know how that happened. In this volume, we have that explanation. We find out how the Minotaur came to confront Bell. We find out why Eyes was there to save him sort of in the nick of time. And we also follow other events that occurred out of Bell's line of sight in that first volume. And then eventually this book ends pretty much right at the point where volume one of the main series ends. Now, in terms of my enjoyment of this book, initially I found it a little hard to get into. This volume is written very much for people that are not existing fans of the Danmachi series. In the beginning, we have all sorts of exposition to tell us what the dungeon is, how the dungeon works, how the city of Orario came to be, why the city was built. We are introduced to these characters one by one that we already know. And so initially, I kind of was like, okay, I know all this stuff. Can we just move on? And so I found that a little bit cumbersome initially coming into this volume. Once Eyes comes face to face with Belle, though, I found that the pacing picked up. Because at that point, the book becomes much more about the characters. We focus much more on Eyes as a person and her emotions that, for the most part, have been hidden from us as readers of the main series. So we get to see more of how she works and who she is and how she fits in with these other members of the Loki familia. We see how these characters care for each other, and we see how these characters try to build each other up. So it becomes much more of a character piece and sort of a friendship piece once we get past that sort of initial introduction. And as a fan of the series, I really enjoyed it because it gave me a lot more appreciation for who the character of Eyes Wallenstein is. 
And I can see why this story, this, you know, focusing on her as a character has to be done separate from the main series. In fact, even Omori in his afterword to the volume states that he was initially told that having a character so powerful be so important to the main character would obliterate and ruin the main series. And so even he thought the only way to focus on just how powerful this girl is, is to have her in her own book. And I think that's a good idea. And I think it works really well because in the main series, we focus on Bell and his growth. This single lone adventurer starting off brand new. And we follow him as he grows as a person. We follow him as his relationships grow and he gains friends and allies. We are watching him build himself. That is a completely different story and a different perspective than this series where we are already joining an established familia. We are already joining characters who are very, very strong. And the stories that you have to tell with those characters to make the story interesting would not work with the kind of character that we have in the main series. And even though I would say this first volume is very complementary to filling in blanks and gaining our knowledge about who these characters are in comparison to the roles they have in the main series, there's also a storyline being built into this that I think is going to be completely its own and operate completely separate from the main series. I'm sure the two will interweave with each other. I mean, they kind of have to, but there's obviously going to be big events that occur that are exclusive to this series. And those events have to be much bigger and more dangerous than what we have in the main series because we've got far stronger characters that are being used to deal with it. I know that Amori said in the end of Volume 6, when he talked about how this series was coming out, he said that this series would focus a lot more on dungeon crawling and being in the dungeon than even the main series does. So I'm looking forward to that. Like, because this family's so strong, we're going to see elements and parts of the dungeon that we just would not be able to see with Bell because of how he is progressing and what level he currently is. So there's a lot, I think, of story to be told using already powered characters that are completely separate to the main series. So all in all, this first volume I thought was really, really good. It was a lot better than I thought. I, I kind of wondered if it would feel half-baked, sort of like a half-hearted, I just did it for the money kind of side story, but it seems pretty clear to me that Omori knows these characters, that he really enjoys these characters. And I really think that Aiza's backstory is going to be something special because we're teased with a little bit of it in this volume, but we really aren't given much. And in the same way that Belle's backstory is becoming increasingly important in the main series, I'm pretty sure that Aiza's is going to be important in this series. And just maybe, just maybe, in the main series as well. So those are my thoughts on volume number one of Sword Auraria, the spinoff of Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? Uh, next week, as promised, I will be reviewing Sword Art Online Progressive, volume number one. And you know what? I think I've been partly intimidated by this because uh, you can see just how much thicker. It's almost like double the length of uh, the average light novels that I've been reading. But uh, it's been on my shelf for a very long time. A lot of you have asked me to give it a read. And so I'm going to do that for next week. So thanks very much for watching the video. If you're brand new here, don't forget to subscribe to check out all my future light novel reviews. I've got links to some of my old reviews and I don't just read books. I like to write them too. I've got links to that as well. Thanks again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, bye-bye for now.